Dedicated, determined, dependable. This is News 10 ABC in the morning. Breaking overnight, bodies found inside the home of a colony police officer after a fire broke out there. We're live with team coverage working to find out who was inside the home and what exactly happened. Our Sam Damasio and Heather Kovar on the story working every angle trying to get us more information and we'll get to them in just a moment. First though, your no wait weather and as you saw there from those live pictures. We have some flurries flying around. Yes. New flurries. The second day Feels in a row like here. February today. <laughs> we should mention too that Ryan is out today. He's a little under the yeah. weather. And yeah. The family's been sick. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Him and the the whole Ryan clan. Yeah. Getting they're having out a there. tough time. So, yeah. Yeah. We're wishing him the best. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you what's happening right now because we do have a few snow showers. We also have this. This is going to take effect later today. It's a lake effect snow advisory for Herkimer Hamilton County. It's not yet in effect though. Right now, the flurries that we're seeing right now are unrelated. We'll see some light snow showers and flurries this morning, but it's later today when that lake effect machine is expected to fire back up. And as per usual, that's mainly an issue for areas to the north and west of the capital region. But still, you know, Fulton, Montgomery County, even the capital region and portions of southern Vermont and the Berkshires could see some of that lake effect snow make it to us. But it's those areas shaded in light blue that are expecting higher amounts, four to eight inches in Herkimer and Hamilton County. But for most of us today, we'll see scattered snow showers, flurries, adding up an additional dusting to an inch or so. No big accumulations, uh, but some small numbers will be added on top of whatever you got yesterday. It's pretty light, but they are widespread, and uh, it, it may have just left a thin coating of snow on some of the roadways. Most roads this morning are going to be fine, especially the major highways, but back roads could just be a little slippery. Temperatures are in the 20s. <laughs> So that means it is cold enough for the snow to stick, but it also means that salt treatment will be very effective. So that's why most of our roads will be fine. For the kids at the bus stop, it's not overly cold, 22 to 28 degrees scattered snow showers with light winds. This afternoon, a flurry or snow shower will be possible, but look at the temperature above freezing, 32 to 38 degrees. Now, coming up, we've got a lot to talk about, both the snow chances today and tomorrow. Also, a huge drop in temperatures that's coming for the upcoming weekend. I'll go through all that, plus we'll check in live with meteorologist Greg Pollock from the Mobile Storm Tracker. He'll show you exactly what the ground looks like right now. That's in about 10 minutes. Christina, Nicole. All right, Nick, thanks so much. Well, we're continuing to follow breaking news out of Latham this morning, where police are investigating a deadly fire. We know that fire broke out last night around 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. but since then, we've learned more. Yeah, a lot of unanswered questions still, though, Christina. It happened on Shawlerin Drive. This is a look at where the home is. We're told that it is owned by a colony patrol officer. News 10 ABC, Sam Damasio, on the scene this morning for us. And since we started learning more about this fire, Sam, fill us in on what you know at this point. Well, Christina, we've been here for hours overnight and for hours, police officers and evidence technicians have been going in and out of that home behind me here. The address is 35 Shawrin Drive here in Latham and Colony Police tell us the home is owned by one of their officers. Which officer, though, they are not yet saying. Crime scene tape surrounds what's left of that burnt out house and both Colony and state police are still on scene. It's been 12 hours now since this deadly fire broke out around 6 o'clock last night and it has been an active scene here ever since then and although they have not given us a number on fatalities we did see three stretchers taking taken into the home and come out with what appeared to be remains they were then loaded into coroner's vans officers I talked to tell me uh, there is still a lot of work to do here before they can release any more information but I will be here throughout the morning and continue to stay on top of their investigation and work to find out who was inside that house when this fire broke out. But for now, we're live in Latham. Samantha Damasio, News 10, ABC. All right, Sam, thanks. News 10, ABC, bringing you team coverage of this ongoing investigation. While Sam continues to search for answers at the scene, News 10, ABC's Heather Kovar, live outside the Colony Police Station, waiting for word from investigators there. Heather. While we wait for investigators, we have spoken with the uh, district attorney's office who confirms that they are now assisting as needed on this investigation, but they say they are going to still um, have us speak with colony police for any sorts of developments that they might come up with. Um, unfortunately, police say they are continuing to work through the night and that they are hesitant to release uh -huh. any more information this morning. But as you said, we are here at the Colony Police Department waiting and so we can bring it to you as soon as it comes up. Now, in video overnight, 
you see the presence of colony police and fire departments. Also, the assistance of the New York State Police and New York State Office of Fire Prevention and Control was requested. Word overnight from Colony, again, like I said, they're not going to release any further information right now, other than the home in Latham was owned by a colony police patrol officer and that there were fatalities in this fire. Now, at this point, we do not know what, what caused the fatalities. As you heard Sam say, our crews on the scene watched uh, as it appeared as if several bodies were carried out of the home on stretchers. Colony police, once again, say they have a lot of, of work to do tonight before they release any more information, such as the identification of the people killed, um, the ages, as well as just how many people uh, were, were killed in this incident. But we are right here at Colony Police, and we'll keep you um, up to date as we get any more information. Reporting live in Colony, Heather Kovar, News 10 ABC. Heather, thank you. For the latest developments on the investigation in Latham, stay with us both on air and online at News10.com. 606 right now, 29 degrees here in Albany. Schenectady Police making two arrests in a murder that happened on Parkwood Boulevard more than a year ago now. Police say they found 25-year-old Wayne Best Jr. shot in the street there back in December of 2014. Now, this video you see here was taken from the scene as police were investigating that night. He was taken to Ellis Hospital, where he later died. Detectives have arrested and charged 25-year-old Christopher Johnson and 29-year-old Todd Macon with murder. They're both accused of shooting Best to death during the course of an attempted robbery. They're currently being held in the city lockup and they'll be arraigned later this morning. The Albany High School renovation referendum has passed by 228 votes. Here's a look at the final numbers for you. More than 4,000 people voting yes this time in support of the multi-million dollar proposal and more than 3,800 others voting against it. And not everyone is happy with the results after what is being called a botched voting process. A lot of controversy here. The school district only ordered 5,300 ballots, but nearly 8,000 people showed up to vote. Several polling locations ran out of machine ballots, resulting in long lines. Some people even left rather than waiting, so they didn't vote. Still, the president of the Board of Education says these results are valid. Well, the New Hampshire primary is over, and Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Bernie Sanders are celebrating their victories this morning. Voters in the Granite State say they were worried about the economy, and they're putting honesty ahead of electability. Emerging from the pack of Republican governors, a surprise second-place finisher, Ohio Governor John Kasich. It was a tough night for Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton, who promised supporters she is marching on to the nomination. Now we take this campaign to the entire country. We're going to fight for every vote in every state. If you don't have a seatbelt, go get one. We're going to shake this country from top to bottom. Next up, South Carolina, the state's GOP primary set for next week. But Chris Christie is headed home to New Jersey to decide if he's going to stay in the race. This morning, we're learning more about a crash on Wolf Road that sent one person to the hospital. Police tell us the victim was crossing the street when they were hit by a car. It happened just after 8 last night near Colony Center. The victim's condition not clear. Depend on News 10 ABC. We'll let you know as soon as we learn whether or not there'll be any charges related to the accident. We're also hoping to learn more about an accident that happened on the Northway last night near the Twin Bridges. It happened sometime before 7, causing some major delays in traffic. Everything was cleared, though, by about 10 o'clock last night. Depend on News 10 ABC. We'll bring you more as soon as it comes into the newsroom. 608 now. New this morning, a Buffalo man arrested in connection with a Schenectady bank robbery will be arraigned later today. Schenectady police say 45-year-old James Hamilton walked into the key bank on State Street yesterday around 1.30, handed the teller a note, and made off with an unknown amount of money. Police spotted him running on Erie Boulevard and arrested him. He'll be arraigned on one count of felony robbery later this morning. Also in court today, Joshua Bennett. He's the man accused of murdering 13-month-old Kaylee May Castle. Last week, he was offered a plea deal to admit to manslaughter and face a 21-year sentence with five years post-release supervision or go to trial, which could land him with 25 years to life. He's expected in Washington County Court at 9.30 this morning. And today is Ash Wednesday. Christians around the world will begin observances for Lent. The 40-day Lent period lasts until midnight on Easter Sunday. During that time, many believers will give up something, such as their favorite food or activities. People also use this time to take up acts that help others, like charity. The observance of Lent dates back to the 4th century. Well, most parents don't let their children stay up late on a school night, usually. 
But one father allowed it, just for the Bruce Springsteen concert that was on Monday night. Yeah, Patrick Papano wrote a special note for his 12-year-old daughter <coughs> apologizing for her tardiness. Papano says the letter was meant to be funny, and luckily that's exactly what the teachers thought. In the letter, Patrick also mentioned Bruce Springsteen playing for three and a half hours, and it was a concert he'll never forget. Going to a Springsteen show, and they've both loved Springsteen since they were born, you know, that's a big deal to them. You know, ultimately they want to meet the man someday, as do their father, but, <laughs> you know, it, it was a good time. They had a ball at the show. It was one of the best Springsteen shows I've ever seen. And we're hearing that from so many other yeah. people. A great show. Now, even though the school found humor in the letter, they did still mark her late. They did what they had to do, but yeah, they seem to be understanding, right? Fear surrounding the Zika virus continuing to grow, but could this fear lead to something good? Coming up, we'll introduce you to a local family with a child living with microcephaly and tell you what is bringing them hope. And Twitter taking a stand to fight cyberbullying. Still ahead, how their latest security standards are making Twitter trolls a thing of the past. Good morning from the mobile storm tracker. We are at Stavison Plaza. A few flurries around. A live report coming up. And a live look at the roads. Route 7 at Miller Road. Still dark out there this morning. Lots of headlights, though. The roads look like they're a little shiny. That's because we've had a few snow flurries overnight, but nothing major. Things looking pretty good. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll be right back. Wake up with 10. The Zika.